It was very difficult for me not to be involved with music because uh, both my parents are very musical. My dad, when he was 14, joined with his mum and dad and he toured around Ireland and my mum was a music teacher. My dad's music would be a, various sort of, a variation of sort of ballads, Irish ballads, to Glenn Miller type of hits that were happening at the time. And then the area I come from, known as the Gaeltart area, the northwest of uh, Donegal, uh, means that you're brought up speaking Gaelic as your first language within that area. And there is a lot of Irish traditional music within that area as well. So I felt really lucky that I heard all sort of diverse music at a very young age. I wasn't aware of it, but I definitely was very determined to, to be involved with music. I knew about Enya, and uh, I knew she'd just finished college, and she was into music, and I'd heard she had a good voice. I met Nikki and Roma through my family. Myself and Roma were managing Clannet at the time. In the same way as we managed Enya, I wore a couple of hats then as well, so I was, I was doing their live sound. And he'd asked me to join the band. The next thing, I'm touring around Europe for two years, and I loved it. I really loved it, but I have to say that after two years, I wanted to get back to where I was with my classical training. I could see she had the potential for a solo career. I was talking a lot with Nicky and he had a lot of musical ideas and he talked about sort of, for instance, like a layering of the voice and I thought this sounded really fascinating. There are three people that have, you know, are, are involved here, myself, Nikki and Roma. We started working together, I suppose, about 1982. And when we made the decision, OK, we want to do this, we put together a studio. And the free time I had, Enya had that time. Enya was living in our house and she started, all these melodies started to come out. So we got together whenever we could. And then Roma starts to write lyrics. At the time... I'd said to Enya Nicholas, uh, the music's very visual. Why don't we think about soundtrack initially? I started to compose piano melodies, instrumentals, and Roma found them very visual and thought they'd be suited to film work and got in touch with film directors and film producers and uh, then got um, a script sent from David Putnam for The Frog Prince. Something about the story, uh reminded me of Enya and Enya's music and I sent it to them, uh, Roma and Enya, and they liked it a lot. And we worked, I think, six months. Well, they worked six months on the score of the film and delivered what I think is an absolutely gorgeous score, beautiful score. And that was the beginning of working with Soundtrack. We heard they were making a, a BBC documentary on the Celts, so we thought, this is perfect. We were working on a particular piece of music at the time and we'd actually titled it The March of the Celts. The main inspiration was historical, was Irish. You were relating the story of the Celts. And I got a phone call from Tony McCauley, who was a producer for the BBC in Northern Ireland, asking us, would we work on this new series called The Celts? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. That really was an amazing coincidence. So he said, do you have any music? you can send us down. So I sent him down this piece and the director got back to us and said we could have the whole series, 72 minutes of music to do. And that's how the first album, the first Enya album happened. I 
had to say that Orinoco Flow is a very important song because it introduced me worldwide. It was the last track that we did on Watermark. And I think at that stage, it was a touch of euphoria. There was a touch of excitement and that's the way I was thinking at the time. It was a song that needed time to, um, to arrange, so that's why it kept being shelved. Um, we'd work in it for a while, believe in it, and then it was like, no, this isn't working, and we'd shelve it and work on something else. It was lovely to work on Watermark, the first solo album, but as far as like who the listener was going to be, how it would sell, and even you know, never entered our heads to even sort of, you know, say we have a single, you know, because this music was so different. The first time I kind of sensed that I, the, the music was going to be sort of successful was when I was doing a photo shoot. I had just done Top of the Pops the night previous with Ornoco Flo and this gentleman, he was just a postman, was walking past and he said, oh, what's this for, you know, and it was for some paper and then he said, oh, what do you do, he asked me and I said, oh, I sing and then he said, he said, I don't listen to much music, but he said, but last night, he said, on top of the pops, he said, you know, my children were listening and he said, but I heard this song and I think it's great and he said it was Ornoco Flow and I thought, wow. Say 